Now I've been in New York, Texas, Midwest, and it all reminds me of California, cause there's no place like California, California, A-A-T-L-M-I-A, the MV all reminds me of California, cause there's no place like California, California, A. Now I'm smelling like LA. Met a from Miami to the Machiavelli. Left the kids on the belly. Left the vid on my celly. She ate like spaghetti. I'm hitting gas and ready. Met some killers in Memphis. Like they from Oakland. Give me my flowers while I can smell them. Ain't talking about roses. Literally, I'm lean. Mix it like a bought it in Nashville. Then I woke up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. It's sunny. California, but nothing like Compton. It's more like Calistoga and it's hot as Arizona. I pop me up. Fresno, hard colder than Minnesota in October. Don't interrupt, darling. I'm in the zone. Why does everywhere I go just remind me of home? Ah, uh, you know that state of gold with the bed. Them other places come close, but they don't compare. Now I've been in New York, come on, Texas, yeah, Midwest, and it all reminds me of California. Cause there's no place like California. California, A A T L M I A D M V. All reminds me of California. Cause there's no place like California. California, A. California. Fresh off a flight to Boston, got a BZ in Maryland that I pipe too often. Headed right to Austin, most likely flossing. Type exhausted, high as a forklift. Uh, handful of goons out in Colorado. Any given afternoon, you can catch a hollow. Uh, honestly, it's the same out in Richmond, Virginia or California. Either state, you can get it. I done seen everywhere from. Russia to Delaware, trust me, I'm well aware. Barcelona to Bel Air, Petty to the D, Twad, don't tell him. He saw how heaven he balls. Uh, every project, every seashore. And I ain't content trying to see more nomadic. Uh, I probably wanna up alone. All it takes is a melody to uh, remind me of home. I've been in New York, Texas, yeah, Midwest, and it all reminds me of California. Cause there's no place like California. California, A A T L M I A D M V all reminds me of California. Cause there's no place like California. California, A California. Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is Matt. Larry, they broke ground on this place in the year 2000, opened it in August of 2002, and it's been the home of this franchise ever since. Welcome to NRG Stadium in Houston. We count down to kickoff in what should be an epic one here between the New Orleans Saints and the Seattle Seahawks. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. They come up with one back. That's Ingram. Here's Breeze to throw. Sideline throw. It's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes in bounds. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great, and a double coverage, and it's intercepted. It's the Pro Bowl quarterback, Richard Sherman, and they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. So the offense has it first and 10. Throwing on for and oh, right away, he lost the football. But fortunately, the Saints were able to hold on to it, so they will indeed keep possession. 
plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from it. In this case, though, a teammate trying to get it to Thomas, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And they're already in the red zone. The 18-yard line is where they take over. Oh, and I saw the pressure coming at him. That just looked problematic. Hit him as he threw it. And the interception ensued. Let me pay homage to the man who stood in this spot before. He always talked about how much pressure is in the face of a guy and can he step into a throw. And when you can't do that, oftentimes interceptions result. First carry for Thomas Rawls. <laughs> and effective running here. He'll take it down inside the 10. Nine yards is the pick up there and they'll have a second and one. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. They go again with Rawls. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. It's a loss of two. Now third down. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed. And that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. Now the fourth-year man from Texas A&M, Kristen Michael. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they've got it first and goal. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. First and goal at the three-yard line now. They'll try and run for it with Michael. And he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Kristen Michael taking it in from two yards out. And the Seahawks have taken a first-quarter lead. Well, Brandon, he just followed his nose, and his nose took him to the end zone. But how about the big guys up front giving him at least a stalemate in order to find that space? Yeah, the O-line won the battle in the trenches there, didn't it? So that drive, four plays, and it ends with a three-yard scoring. House can now to send this one away following the score. Short, short kick, one of the up middle take it now. And excellent field position here as this drive will start on the other side of the 50-yard line. They come up with one back. That's Ingram. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Ready. Five, eight, five, eight, five. Breeze again here on second and ten. Trying to get it to Thomas, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. How about the big boys snagging one? You don't see that every week. No, you don't, but a lot of them are just reliving their old dreams, going back to when they were youth football and in high school. They didn't always play defensive line. Some of them actually handled the football, and you can see the flashback when he grabbed that one. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. The drive begins with a run by Rawls. <laughs> And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. 
Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Tackle made there by Nick Fairley. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. On second down, Rawls. Oh, nice move. <laughs> and he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. On the stop, James Laurinaitis. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. On third down, it's Nichol. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. He loses four, and it brings up four. And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense, they were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? And <laughs> Almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line. But how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility? They're going on fourth down. It's Wilson eluding the pressure right. The Seahawks go for it but can't convert. And the Saints will have the football back. Well, certainly not the way that they were hoping that possession would end, failing to convert on fourth. And now they've got to make sure that they keep their poise, they keep their confidence. Just because it didn't work once doesn't mean if they get that same situation later that they shouldn't go for it again. The defense feels great, but the offense, they can't be despondent. It's brought in here by Willie Sneed. Pushing the foul, roughing the passer, defense. Oh, and the defender took some liberties there with a late hit, roughing the passer. The league has done a great job of defining what is a late hit and illegal contact on a quarterback. The defenders really have to get in line. Brees now on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Brees will try again on second. Now Brees lost the football. The big man get the oxygen tank ready. The third. 20, 10, 5, and it's a Seattle Seahawks touchdown. And we had only seen six fumble returns for a touchdown in Super Bowl history. Now we just witnessed number seven. And how about the emotion that goes into something like that? Because not only do you get that, back-to-back -back Super Bowls, we've had it happen now. And usually when that happens, a team takes charge of the game. Yeah, and prior to these back-to-back -back years with that, Charles, we hadn't seen one since the Cowboys' James Washington did it in Super Bowl 28. And it's good to make it 14-0. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. This is fielded at the goal line. And his guys are going to start their drive right at the 20 yard line. Illegal block in the back. Return team. On 
first and ten. Here's pressure. Gets to him, and down he goes. Back at the four-yard line. It'll be a loss of five there as the safety blitz winds up paying off. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. Back near his goal. In trouble, and the ball's out. It's in the end zone loose. And it looks like the offense did get the football back, but it is clearly in that end zone, and it's going to be a safety. So this is now the fourth time in the last six Super Bowls that we've had a safety. And obviously, that's strange when you figure during the regular season, on average, you'll see a safety about once every 14 games. So an oddity here, to say the least. After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football, and here's the free kick. Now it's Baldwin. Well, throw on first down with Wilson. Flushed out right. And the grab made by Doug Baldwin. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. I don't care how many times you tell the story, it never loses its luster for me. Doug Baldwin, undrafted out of Stanford, and plays like a number one receiver should in the NFL. I don't care how you cover him. I don't care that his size isn't great. He's the one that typically comes up with the football. Absolutely. His roots go all the way back to Gulf Breeze, Florida, where he's from right on the water near Pensacola. And then, of course, to Stanford. And, boy, he's been good. On first and ten, it's Wilson escaping the pressure right. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. And now he'll turn and off his back foot. He'll heave this deep. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. I know the initial focus was on how far that pass was downfield, but how about the coverage on the play? Able to stay with him, get his hands where the receiver's hands were going to try and catch the ball, tips it up in the air, and knocks it away. On third down, Wilson flush to his right. On the run, he'll let it go deep, right sideline. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. One of the toughest things about playing defensive back is pattern reading, trying to figure out what they're doing. And on that one, they had to fly. Just sending the guy downfield with the in route accompanying it. What people call a dagger route, trying to hit the guy underneath after the clear out. In this case, though, they're not able to get it done. Yeah, they said forget the underneath route. They went for the guy on the fly, but as you said, incomplete. Snap to the up man. And the gamble pays off. They get the first. It's a big play that time on the fake punt. And on fourth and long, somehow they're able to keep the drive going. So they snap it straight to the up man. What's his responsibility? Normally, obviously, just to protect, but he's got to be a guy that can be pretty agile too, right? Yeah, without a doubt, because you're talking about a guy, even in protection, he may have to slide up and down the line of scrimmage to pick up someone who comes through trying to block a punt. So you know he's got that ability to move. But oftentimes it's a use, you know, running back, a fullback, someone who's used to having the ball in their hands, and he's able to pick up the first down. He was trying to get it to Jermaine Curse. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Tremendous field position there at a perfect time to do exactly what they did. Take a shot at the end zone. And they went for the big play, just unable to complete it. Second down following the incompletion. Rawls 
Bills, the lone man in the backfield. Again on set, blitz coming, and down he goes. Nick Fairley in there to get him for a loss of five. Partner, I know the ball security is preached like crazy, but every now and then you've got to know when to get rid of the football and save a little bit of yardage if you're a quarterback. Because now if you're the offensive coordinator, what does it do if it was third and ten versus third and much longer as it is now? Yeah, it changes everything in terms of play calling and the pressure you might expect to face on the very next down. Had to throw the ball away and save the yardage. He didn't get it done. Wilson eluding the pressure right. He finds his man, Baldwin. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. And after a nice game, they don't need the penalty. They'll decline it, take the ball where the play resulted. So let's try this again as they come to the line to go for two. On the ground, Rawls. And he will dive into the end zone, and the two-point conversion is successful. Needed a couple yards for the two-point try. They go to the ground game, and it works. And sometimes it's the exact right thing to do because a lot of teams play you for the pass, so you spread people out, decide to run the football, you often find good running lanes. Hauschka now to send this one away following the score. That'll be taken in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And last time they surrendered the safety, we know they don't want to do that again. That is just one of those oddities in scoring that we get. And it's just so strange to see that go up. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. down and this is incomplete push the foul roughing the passer defense so the roughing the passer They come up with one back. That's Ingram.